Good Friday morning, everyone. This is your tropical weather update here on Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. If you guys are new to the channel, definitely hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below to get all of my important weather forecast updates in the days, weeks, and months ahead. Like I said, guys, good Friday morning out there. We're going to be doing a special edition here of the video today on just your focusing on the tropics. We got a lot of tropical weather here in the Atlantic, the Caribbean, eventually into the Gulf, and the Eastern Pacific. So we're going to be tracking all these systems for you guys on this channel here today this morning um, to get you all the information that you do need so first off we're going to be tracking hurricane fiona this is still a very very strong hurricane across the western atlantic here you can see it's spinning over the open waters of the western atlantic here and showing you the visible satellite imagery kind of a zoomed in version of this you can see there's still an eye wall across the storm system here into the western atlantic and looking at the you know the eye wall itself it has lost a lot of you know of structure since we've last looked at it here on the satellite imagery but it's still there it's still there and we still have a formidable hurricane across the western atlantic so as this tracks to the north it's going to be getting closer to the eastern portions of canada and actually the nova scotia area so prince edward island definitely be on the high alert for definitely some damaging winds with this system as it pushes to the north in fact there are hurricane warnings in these red shaded colors across nova scotia and surrounding areas into eastern canada Canada, those are hurricane warnings. In the blue shade of colors, those are actually tropical storm warnings where we can expect tropical storm force impacts with tropical storm force winds and rainfall across those areas. Even tropical storm watches all the way up to the north here towards northeastern Canada. So definitely a lot to look out for over the next couple of days. So looking at this here, using an ensemble track, you can definitely see it's going to be moving into portions of eastern Canada toward the Nova Scotia area. Prince Edward Island all the way up there into eastern Canada in the next several days. So that will be something to watch. And as we look here at the intensity guidance with this system, yes, it's still a very formidable hurricane at a Category 3 borderline Category 4 system right now. It will slowly start to weaken in the next couple of days here back to a Category 2, eventually a Category 1, and then eventually back to a tropical storm as we get into this weekend here as it pushes farther and farther into eastern Canada over the land. Now looking at this here, a little bit closer view, a 930 millibar low pressure center with this hurricane as we get into this afternoon around the mid-afternoon hours, 2, 3 o'clock or, uh, or so here, central daylight time. And this is what we're going to be seeing over the western and northwestern Atlantic here approaching here Nova Scotia we might have some heavier rain bands starting to work up into these areas as we get as early as late morning into the early afternoon hours but as we get through the evening hours here tonight and getting through much of the day on your Saturday and really much of the weekend we're going to see still a formidable storm look at all the tight ISO bars with this here with a 938 millibar low pressure center here with a hurricane moving inland towards Nova Scotia here uh, Prince Edward Island all the way up into eastern Canada and this is going to be bringing some hurricane and tropical storm force winds and a lot of very heavy rainfall on top of that as well with wind driven rains some flooding out there so definitely a very miserable weekend unfortunately for portions of eastern Canada. Looking at the wind field with this here, yeah, where you see these tan shaded colors and these brownish shaded colors, those are wind gusts here almost off the charts on this map of over 80 miles per hour. In fact, over 120 miles per hour is definitely likely with this over the waters of the northwestern Atlantic. As it pushes towards Nova Scotia into portions of eastern Canada, Prince Edward Island, we're going to still see wind gusts around 100 miles per hour, if not a little bit stronger than that, across a very widespread area. So definitely some power outages. I'm expecting a lot of damage, um, unfortunately, with this system as it moves across Nova Scotia there into eastern portions of Canada through the weekend here as well. And with all the wind, it's going to be bringing a lot of waves as well inland towards Nova Scotia and eastern Canada. We're going to see wave heights approaching 40 feet, if not a little bit higher, especially across eastern Nova Scotia there into eastern Canada as we head into the midday hours on your Saturday. That's when the peak of the you know, the significant waves will be with this system crashing on shore. So we definitely have to worry about some storm surge across these areas as well. 
Looking back, however, closer to home here into the Caribbean, we definitely have another system to watch as we get here into this weekend and really into next week. And we're starting to see that system start to take shape across the central and eastern Caribbean as we speak. You can see a little bit of a kind of compact area of, um, you know, uh, thunderstorm activity in the whites, reds, and pinks here. That is some taller thunderstorm tops here, overshooting tops around 50, 55,000 feet or so. And that's going to continue to move to the west northwest west with time and you can see the low pressure has started to form with this system across the central um, and eastern portions of the Caribbean and this will continue to develop further as it moves over the open waters these very warm waters here look at the warm waters across the western Caribbean and getting up towards Florida there near Cuba and Florida yeah reds here that is around you know 90 degrees Fahrenheit water temperatures either side of 90 so definitely very very warm waters in which this system can develop so we'll continue to watch that Looking at the ensembles with this, they're still all over the place on where the system could go. It could remain over the water here between the Yucatan Peninsula, western Cuba here, and kind of remain over water. And if that does occur, this could be, you know, it's even stronger. But if it does move over western Cuba and kind of move over land for a period of time, it'll start to weaken a little bit before it moves over the open waters toward the Florida Keys there into western Florida here. That's kind of the average mean of the ensembles. And then there's a couple of these that actually bring it towards central Cuba and southern Florida and then over the open waters again of the western Atlantic as we move into next week. So still a lot of options for the track and we'll kind of go over this starting right now with the European forecast model. This is the European high resolution model here. We have a 1001 millibar low as we head into Sunday afternoon and this is really when we start to see more tropical development of a tropical depression if not a weak tropical storm. As we get into early next week on your Monday, Monday morning into Monday afternoon on September 26th this will develop into a formidable tropical storm, if not a hurricane, pot uh, potentially a you know a category one or two hurricane already as it approaches western Cuba here with this model as a 993 millibar low. As we go into Tuesday, we have this crashing over portions of western and central Cuba towards the Key West area, the Florida Keys, as a 987 millibar low. That would be a formidable Category 2 hurricane, potentially a little bit stronger as that moves over the open waters again between Cuba and Florida here on the European forecast model. Now, in comparison, this is the GFS model here. It does start the storm off a little bit stronger south of Cuba as a 994 millibar low tracks it a little bit longer over the water, so there's no surprise the GFS strengthens this to a 954 millibar low, and just kind of off the west of Cuba here into the open waters by your Monday afternoon, and then finally moves over a little bit of, uh, you know, far western Cuba, but still really doesn't go over much land, so it still strengthens it to a 952 millibar low, and still over the waters of the far eastern Gulf of Mexico by your Tuesday time frame, so that is something to definitely take into account. So if the European forecast model is right, we'll still have the on, onshore flow here to southern and southwestern Cuba. We'll still have the significant waves as we head into Monday afternoon, waves that could be around 15 feet. But as we move here a little bit closer toward the Florida Keys and as it moves over you know, portions of Cuba, as we get into that Tuesday afternoon time frame, the Florida Keys, we could be talking about waves between 15 and 20 feet, potentially up to those areas according to the European forecast model. Now compare that with the GFS and a lot stronger of the you know uh, version of the system as we head into early next week. It would take it over the water more, which would strengthen it more, which would make bigger waves with this system, with waves approaching 30 feet just to the south and southwest of Cuba as early as Monday afternoon crashing on shore into Cuba there and with a lot of storm surge and then crossing over Cuba and we'll have waves that could be in the eastern gulf according to the GFS approaching 30 if not 35 feet as we head into early next week on your Tuesday September 22nd. Looking however at the rainfall footprint kind of some early estimates of the rainfall accumulation with this system the European forecast model brings it again over western and central Cuba up through the Florida Keys and southern Florida so places like Miami, Key West all the way into portions of uh, 
o'clock. Cuba there, we could be talking about widespread rainfall amounts on the European forecast model of four to eight inches. Looking that in comparison to the GFS, a lot stronger of a system, a lot farther west and north with this system would bring a lot more of that heavy rainfall farther up into central Florida here, places like Orlando, Naples, Tampa Bay, and some of these other areas, Daytona Beach. We could be seeing widespread rainfall amounts in mo uh, most of Florida and central and southern Florida approaching maybe a foot, if not a little bit more. Now looking at the Canadian forecast model, it brings a lot of this, again, over western Cuba and then kind of parallel to Florida and moving it more inland all the way up toward Jacksonville and even Savannah, Georgia there, which would bring widespread heavy rainfall across most of the state of Florida, if not even southeastern Georgia, with widespread rainfall amounts between 6 and possibly as much as 20 inches. So definitely a lot on the table here with the track and intensity with this system. And we'll continue to keep tabs on this here and give you a more accurate weather forecast once we know more information, once this gets a little bit closer. We're still several days out. We'll still get a kind of a better tune on to where, where and when we could see some of these impacts. Now, looking back across the southern and eastern Atlantic, we have a 30% chance of another tropical depression, tropical storm developing as we head into the next couple of days. Also a 70% chance, a little bit higher of a chance of development just off the coast there of Western Africa in the next couple of days, really within the next one to two days, I do expect a named system here, potentially a tropical storm. And looking at this here, we got that system that has a 30% chance right here off the, you know, the open waters of the Southern Atlantic. We got another system here coming off Africa as an open wave now. This one has a better shot of becoming a tropical depression or tropical storm as as we head into the next couple of days. So let's track that here with the European forecast model. It looks like as we get into Saturday, if not Sunday timeframe, September 24th and 25th, we'll see a 1,009 millibar low, maybe, uh, you know, maybe a tropical depression across the open waters of the Southern Atlantic. I don't expect much with that 30% chance system, but I do expect that maybe a tropical storm to develop off the West coast there of uh, Africa as we head into this weekend. And then looking at the GFS, the same type of theme, it looks like a little bit stronger stronger of a low, maybe a tropical depression or tropical storm with that as well, just to the west of Africa. Again, looking at the steering current for this, it looks like it's going to move more to the north and west as this kind of Bermuda high will kind of pull it with it here towards the, you know, the central Atlantic. So once it gets closer towards the, you know, the Bermuda high, it's going to kind of get eaten up by that ridge of high pressure across the central and northeastern Atlantic as we head into early next week. So I don't expect these two systems in the eastern um, portions and southern portions of the Atlantic Ocean to really be too much of an effect on the United States or really anybody in the Caribbean as we go into the next week. We just got to worry about Fiona and we just got to worry about our next name system, whether it's Hermine, uh, Hermine or Ian, which definitely we have to watch as we get into next week. Looking at the Eastern Pacific, we got Tropical Storm Newton across the Eastern Pacific here uh, over the open waters. Really not going to be an effect across most of these areas. It's going to be moving west and then back southwest here as a tropical storm through this weekend, through Sunday, and then back to a post-tropical depression as we kind of move into early next week over the open waters of the Eastern Pacific. Pacific. Then behind that, we have a 20% chance of a system just to the south of the coast of Mexico, which could develop into a tropical depression and maybe a tropical storm as we head into late this weekend and especially early next week that we'll have to watch as well. And again, no surprise across the eastern Pacific. We have all these orange shaded colors, the yellow shaded colors. Those are at least 75 to 80 degree Fahrenheit water temperatures across these areas here. I think the eastern Pacific will quiet down here. I think the Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Gulf will really become more active, which is what we usually see for La Nina type of years across these areas. So we'll continue to watch that as we move forward. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like the video down below by giving it a thumbs up. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below and look at those later on today. And guys, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Definitely appreciate all the new subscribers out there and all the viewers out there here. Everybody stay safe in Eastern Canada and watch out for a tropical development across the Caribbean and the Gulf in the next week. Um, and everybody have a great Friday, a great weekend, and I'll see you all in the next video.